three bears. Three stools, three beds, three bowls. One a bit too big, the other too small, the third just right. She deserved as I see it. Always took what she wanted without asking. No being here. Gotta keep looking. Will of the Wisp. I think it's got something to show us. Careful. It's not to be trusted. out of any fairy tale I know. Wonder how he got here. In past times, Anariette and I would occasionally run into them here. You see, knights errant far outnumber princesses in the real world, so some knights would sneak into the playroom, then into this land, in search of their fairy tale damsels. That's all. Only to be shredded to bits by a swarm of pixies. Man, he's delicious. This long logs tower? Indeed. It's even taller than I remember. Wait. What Joss said about the third beam, remember? In the possession of a bold farmhand somewhere deep beneath the ground. Yes, this must be it. Let's go. It always grapple up her braid in the past, but I don't see it anywhere. We'll find another way up. I'd pull myself up here, and I'll have to make that jump. If you say so, I shall wait down here if it's all the same. Climbing so my strong suit. Prince's corpse. Tried to free long locks, but fell and broke his neck.
Bean. Here it is. Would have stunk to climb all that way for nothing. So? Got the bean, but long locks. Mm. Seems she got sick of waiting for a knight in shining armor. Can you blame her? Men these days, dandies and fops all. That why you cozied up to a vampire? Dead laugh was a tool, and only a tool. Too bad he didn't know that. I trust no one. Learned that long ago. Now it's his turn. To use him. Was that your plan from the start? No. At first, I was simply intrigued. Do you know the story? It was in Matina, a few years past. I'd gone there to pass some loot off to a fence I know. We were hashing out the terms when in walked Detloff. He said he'd come to sell a silver candlestick. He gripped it through a cloth. That caught my eye. I followed him out, observed him from a distance. But he caught on quickly. Yeah, superhuman senses will do that. He turned down a blind alley. I followed. He jumped out from behind a crate, baring his teeth. I suppose he'd wanted to frighten me. Alas, he didn't in the least. After all, I'm a monster too, am I not? A higher vampire and you were unimpressed? Don't know if that's brave or just plain foolish. I've always had a way with ostensibly dangerous, quiet types. That's supposed to be about me, too? Ugh, oh, Mother, I hate to disappoint you, Geralt, but your belly button is not the center of the known world. Though, you do remind me of him a bit, stifling all emotions inside you, ever feigning indifference. You see, when I met Detlaf, I... Somehow I knew, call it intuition. That he meant me no harm, that he was trying to frighten me off, for he, too, was scared. Now, do you understand? I guess. What happened then? We talked, then met up once, twice, three times. Enough that he became infatuated. I truly enjoyed it at first, but only at first. He did not love like a man. But like an animal, madly, deeply, unconditionally, wildly. To return such a feeling, anyone would be hard-pressed. Let alone someone as twisted as I am. So there came a day you just up and disappeared? Yes. There was no other way. Let's just be friends, or I don't deserve you. He'd never have understood that sort of thing. But then, once I decided to return, clean up some old affairs, I remembered him, and concluded he could still be of use. Playing with fire, that. Definitely. And either I'll get burned, or I'll burn all else down. No other options. Got a history with Detlaf now. So this meeting will be different. Not afraid? I can handle him. Mm-hmm. Sure about that? You look at him as a witcher and see a monster. I... I know what he's really like. You needn't worry. It's time to go. Just a bit more work and we'll be able to say sot off to this fecking fable sphere. 